Hi, it's Lachlan here, and welcome to Lachlan Likes a Thing, a show where I take a thing and see whether or not I like it. Now, the thing we're looking at in this video is the JVC HA S500 portable on ear headphones. Now, I often get asked in the comments on these videos to recommend a good pair of headphones under $100. And to be completely honest, I haven't been totally impressed with a lot of the headphones that I've encountered in that price segment. Uh, for instance, I wasn't really a big fan of the Logitech UE4000 or the Skullcandy Navigator, just because I found the sound a bit muffled and a bit blessed sounding. Uh, and even the headphone that I do really recommend for $100, which is the Sony ZX701 IP, originally retailed for over $150, so you know, that's kind of cheating a little. Um, but I did get a lot of comments recommending that I should check out these headphones. These are JVC HA S500s. And uh, these retail for something like $44 on Amazon. And I got these used on the headfi.org forum, um, the for sale forum, for about 34 bucks. And I gotta say, for the price, I'm actually really, really impressed. So let's take a closer look. So what I've got in my hand right now is the silver version of this headphone and you can see this kind of silver chrome finish which honestly I'm not a huge fan of because in kind of this plastic I think it looks a bit tacky and a bit cheap. Um, there's also a black version of this headphone which from the pictures I think looks a bit more snazzy. Uh, overall in terms of finishing I have to say the materials and the plastic used on this headphone do seem a little on the cheaper side and uh, you know, this headphone does feel like a kind of $40 headphone in a lot of ways. That said, in terms of the actual solidity of the construction, the chunkiness of the parts, it actually feels relatively solid. It doesn't feel flimsy or cheap in, in that regard. So um, I'm not overly concerned about the durability of this headphone. Uh, what's interesting about this headphone design is that uh, it actually folds up in a huge variety of ways, actually more ways than I've ever seen a headphone fold up before. So it actually folds flat with these ear cups, uh, it actually folds along those um, headband parts, but actually folds at the top here as well. So what you can actually do is fold it up into this kind of shape, or fold it up into that kind of shape, all sorts of ways for you to store it, which is Honestly, um, a little overkill, I think, in terms of the flexibility for this headphone. Sometimes it's a little fussy to take on and off because it kind of flops around a little. But that said, I'm always a big fan of headphones that fold up, and this is definitely uh, one of the most flexible headphones that I've ever encountered. Now, in terms of the cable, uh, once again, JVC has outdone themselves. Um, if you've seen my JVC FXT80 review, uh, I had to say JVC always puts really nice cables even on their cheap gear. So this cable on the HAS500, um, you get a nice thick cable sheath, everything feels quite solid. Not much of a strain relief as far as the ear cup goes unfortunately, but on the plug side um, you get a quite nice substantial plug and overall quite a nice cable for a cheap portable headphone. One thing to note is that this is a dual entry cable, so the cable will come out on both sides of your head. Overall, um, I think the build quality isn't stellar, but it's pretty good for the price. So in terms of comfort, the ear pads on the S500 appear to be made out of a relatively nice feeling material, but the foam used on the inside of the ear pads is quite dense, and as a result, the ear pads aren't particularly soft feeling, they aren't particularly compliant and uh, combined with the smaller ear cup size, what you get when you put them on your ears is you get quite a strong feeling of the ear pads kind of pressing against your ears. It's not as if clamping force is particularly tight, but the ear pads just aren't very soft. Uh, you can thankfully remove the ear pads and kind of replace them with other options. I haven't tried that myself, but that might be something to look into. As far as the rest of the headphone goes, it's a relatively lightweight headphone. Uh, and it, it, it's uh, relatively secure feeling on the head, so no concerns that way. The single-sided uh, cable, sorry, the dual-entry cable on both sides might be a little irritating for some, but um, the cable is relatively lightweight and it's not a huge issue. Um, in terms of noise isolation, I think this headphone is just a little below average. Um, I do feel like it doesn't block out quite as much noise as something like the Skullcandy Navigator but uh, it, it's serviceable and certainly um, in terms of overall ergonomics, I think this is a reasonable headphone for the price, but it's certainly not best in class. 
So in terms of sound, let me set your expectations first. This is a $40 headphone, and for $40 you're not going to get some sort of amazing, high fidelity, super detailed sound. Um, in terms of overall sound balance, these are bassy sounding headphones, and they have a uh, somewhat congested, somewhat compressed sound stage, uh, and they're a bit murky, and you can definitely hear kind of the internal reflections from the ear cups. Uh, certainly this is not a giant killer and it's not going to compete with something like the Sennheiser Amperia anytime soon. All that said, I do like these headphones way more than the UE4000 or the Skullcandy Navigator. Uh, just because for a bassy headphone, it's got a really punchy bass sound to it. Uh, it's a bass that uh, is very visceral, it extends very low, it's just a dynamic kind of fun sounding headphone. And in terms of treble, even though the treble presence isn't particularly emphasized, um, it still has uh, quite a lot of shimmer, um, uh, a nice texture to the treble that really kind of gives this headphone a bit of flavor. So overall, I think this is definitely one of the better options in terms of sound for $100 provided that you do like your bass. So just like how I thought the JVC FXD80 is standout value in the in-ear earphone market, I think JVC has brought some of that carbon nanotube magic to the HAS500 because this is a headphone that's really good value in this price segment. It's got a clever construction, it's got a fun, dynamic, punchy sound to it. Just overall, a really good value headphone. Now, um, if you are after a bit more of a leaner sound, a bit more of a detailed sound, I would check out the Sony ZX701 IP, um, and you can check that review out on my channel. This is more of a detailed sound, a bit more of a balanced, and, and definitely a more well-built headphone. But if you are after a bassier headphone for yourself, or you're uh, you know, looking to gift something for a friend, I think this is definitely a good value option. So thank you to everyone who uh, asked me to check these out, because these are a bit of a gem. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. You can click the like button if you found it helpful, and please leave a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, you can talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Lachlan Likes A Thing, or on Twitter at Lock Likes A Thing. Uh, thank you again to all my regular subscribers. I just hit uh, about 500,000 views, which is fantastic. And so thank you again for all your support. Uh, and happy listening!